रेक्टोविजाइनल फिस्टुला द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉज ऑफ रेक्टोविजाइनल फिस्टुला हैपन्स टू बी द ऑब्सटेट्रिक ट्रामा कॉजेज मोस्टली इन नॉर्मल विजाइनल डिलीवरीज द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द एपिजियोटमी और यू नो एपिजियोटमी बाई अनट्रेंड हैंड्स और टीयर इन द बाई नॉट गिविंग अ जुडिशियस एपिजियोटमी मोस्टली दे मोस्टली दे आर द रीजन्स ऑफ रेक्टो वजाइनल फिस्टुला which is accounted for by 88% uh, the remaining uh, 10% of fistulas they are uh, because of uh, a sequelae of crohn's disease inflammatory bowel disease and a lot of others are because of uh, irradiation malignancies cancer uh, sexual trauma and infection so the this is the incidence of uh, rectovaginal fistula and the most common cause happens to be obstetric trauma uh okay doctor and what is the classification of rvf so a uh, classification of rvf the easiest and the most common uh, classification of rvf happens to be um, uh, low um, uh, you know middle and high uh, are uh, rectovaginal fistulas so low are very very common in obstetrics because they are formed exactly at the uh, level of uh, vaginal fourchette and uh, uh, you know lower than the dentate line uh, middle uh, rectal rectovaginal fistulas are somewhere in between like i always mention whenever we do the uh, classification you, you should know the lowest and the highest and anything in between comes uh well it's got a, lo- a longer and larger space so the uh, the low down uh, erecto vaginal fistulas the ones which are just behind the vaginal fourchette just close to the vaginal fourchette not exactly on it but close to it within you know 2 to 3 cm proximal to it and in uh, side it is uh, below the dentate line and the high uh, um, erecto vaginal fistulas are in close proximity to the, to the cervix and the middle uh, erecto vaginal fistulas are somewhere somewhere in between uh if we classify them on the basis of their etiologies and type 1 happens to be the obstetric uh, fistulas which account for 88% of all the cases uh, which are traumatic obstetric fistulas type 2 happens to be the ones which are caused because of inflammatory bowel disease like the crohn's disease which account for around 10% of the fistulas type 3 they uh, they are usually because of the post radiation injuries and uh, type 4 happens to be because of one, one of these post uh, post op injuries uh, basically iatrogenic fistulas and the others they are accounted for by infection by malignancies by sexual trauma so this is the classification of recto vaginal fistulas okay doctor and what are the signs and symptoms of rvf and how to diagnose and confirm it Oh, well the uh, the the signs and symptoms are very very obvious sometimes the patient herself will be able to tell you there is incontinence of uh, flatus because obviously the sphincteric action is not able to control it it's passing through the vagina the uh, passage of flatus and of stools through the vaginal orifice is the biggest symptom sign of the disease and you can confirm this uh, diagnosis by certain imaging modalities we th- we say mri and ct scan mostly mri is uh, along with contrast will be able to delineate the fistulous tract but it's also very easy to dis- delineate the fistulous tract if it's a low down uh, you know fistula by just putting a simple probe or <clears throat> a thin dilator uh, inside the vaginal uh, side of the fistulous tract with one hand in the rectum we can easily feel <clears throat> the you know the fistulous tract we can easily uh, you know find out the fistula so the diagnosis is pretty clear clinically in the low down fistulas for high down for high up fistulas uh, we might have to depend on mri with contrast or uh, uh, yeah basically basically the imaging modalities okay doctor can you briefly describe the operative technique for different types of rvf so for different kinds of uh, recto vaginal fistulas there are different methods available uh, for uh, low down fistulas we have a lot of uh, different uh, categories of uh, uh, you know operations available we have uh, uh, you we have the trans anal approach the trans perineal approach the trans uh, trans uh, vaginal approach for the fistula in which we just delineate the fistula close the fistula tract and we approximate uh, the two uh, you know uh, vaginal mucosa separately anal mucosa separately and we put into position a flap for uh, ready uh, vascular supply uh, so it's also one more technique is uh, fistulectomy in which uh, the entire fistula tract is first removed and then you know these separate sutures are taken so there is marsh's flap technique mostly involved when you're talking about a flap being constructed for uh, to keep in between the you know the two fistulous opening and mostly it's done through the transvaginal approach 
but uh, transperineal approach in which a complete cpt is made and then you know separately the entire uh, you know this uh, sphincteric complex is stitched uh, uh, you know separately external sphincter internal sphincter and then the fistula anal uh, area is closed and then the vaginal mucosa is closed in between we uh, position the marcius flap so these are you know the different techniques in which uh, by, for the low down fistula as far as the high up fistula is concerned the abdominal repair is there in which we have to open the abdomen and once we open the uh, abdomen then there are you know different methods in which we can close the uh, close the fistula by again putting a flap in between and uh, separating and delineating sometimes a colostomy is also needed to uh, uh, to complete the entire process so that there is no recurrence and there is no uh, soiling of by the feces of the uh, uh, you know fresh suture line so bricart uh, uh, you know this uh, flap is uh, managed and it is kept it between the suture line so that uh, it gives more stability uh, to the uh, you know repair so there is a, a fistula division and then there is closure without sometimes bowel resection sometimes you need bowel resection then like i said bigger patch is there that's another technique uh, then sometimes you do require a proctectomy so in that case there is usually it's done for patients with uh, crohn's disease and um, that's about it these were few of the techniques which are uh, being evolved and which are being used for rectovaginal fistulas okay doctor what is the pre op preparation needed for repair of rvf the most important thing to be spoken to the patient for rectovaginal fistula pre operatively is first of all counseling that it will require some time for you know an on restricted diet the diet which has been told and uh, spoken about in the in the in the hospital and even afterwards uh the patient has to be uh, restricted even before the operation at least for one day uh for um, uh to take anything anything orally and uh, after one day of complete being npo she should her bowel should be prepared very uh, very well uh, preferably peg leg powder should be given one night before and uh, she should be com- she should be entering the ot after complete evacuation of any kind of bowel because we have to be sure that it doesn't soil our fresh uh, suture line uh that is one the other thing is about the antibiotics very very important is a role of uh, injectable antibiotics preferably to be given one night before of the operation to be continued on the day of operation so she'll be on injectable uh, injectable antibiotics pre op as well and um, a very important thing is regarding the counseling on the diet and the diet schedule and uh, that will be the pre op preparation